In the meantime, we're going to start in Oakland, Nebraska. This is Chad, and it's great to have you, Chad. I'm glad that you were patient and waited. Thank you. Thanks, Rush. Good to talk to you. Thank you. Hey, uh, this is not really about education that you were just talking about, but I want to know where uh, they hey, get... Uh, Chad, Chad, wait. No, yes. see, everything is about education. That's the point. <laughs> everything can yeah. be linked. Every, no, no, I'm, I'm not kidding. Everything can be tied back to linked to education. And one way or the I can demo this if you want after you make your point. No, I, I, I hear you, Rush. I, I believe you. Um, but what I'm wondering, this drunken moron, when CNN was uh, interviewing him, you know, he said that Trump's approval rating was only 35 percent. And I'm just wondering, where do they come up with those numbers? Where do they come up with that 35 percent? Because forever we heard when Trey Gowdy was interviewing Hillary Clinton, you know, she kept saying, well, I've given 98 percent of the emails to you already. And Trey Gowdy insisted that you're the only person that says 98 percent. Where do you come up with that number? Is this the same person that's coming up with this 35 well, 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 the answer is very simple. Nunberg is either a stupid idiot or lying. And Hillary right. was lying. Right. As, I mean, it's not complicated. Nunberg doesn't approve of Nunberg hadn't been there since 2015. There isn't a poll that anybody considers worth it that has Trump at 35 percent. Trump's approval numbers, in fact... No matter what poll you look at, February, he had a good month. His, his approval numbers were tacking upward in every opinion poll, and he's, he's hovering between 48 and 50 percent at, uh, at Rasmussen, but it's nowhere near 35 percent. No, and 48 to 50 sounds a lot better, but I, I've got to believe it's even higher than that because I've never seen this poll. You know, they're not, they're not coming out to the sticks here and asking us about our approval. <laughs> Well, they don't go anywhere. They 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 call people on the phone. Um, right. M much much of polling is done, and they still have any trouble finding um, cell phone. You know, there's not a cell phone uh, phone book like there is for right. that one. So, yeah. You, you, look, the thing that here's what you have to do to understand polls. It's up to you to believe whichever one you want to believe, whenever they come out. But the primary purpose of polling data today. Chad, is to shape public opinion, not reflect it. The, prime, the secondary purpose of polling is to create news stories. Isn't it amazing that pretty much every poll result, particularly in a campaign, becomes its own news cycle, its own series of stories? That's why it's done. But here's another thing to look at, Chad. What does it mean? Let's go back one year. Let's go back to uh, March the 6th of 2017. Do you remember, Chad, what Trump's number, his polling number in the presidential race was one year ago? No, I don't. Why not? Um, because it didn't matter. It didn't well, matter. Does it matter what horse is in the lead at the halfway point? No. Doesn't tell you anything. These polls are useless unless you allow them to shape your opinion of things. And that's what they're trying to do.